Good evening. Welcome to our Tuesday night short meditation. Tonight, I'd like to continue working on our breath. Now, some of you who are new to breath work may wonder why you may need to uh, breathe, work on your breath. Everybody knows how to breathe, so surely you must be breathing properly. Uh, well, the science actually tells us that most of us, in fact, the majority of us, breathe around 12 to 18 times per minute, which is actually too fast. Because, and also the way we breathe is fairly shallow. We usually use our top half of our chest to breathe. And as we breathe so quickly, it doesn't give enough time for the air and the oxygen to go to the lower part of the lungs, which is where uh, the oxygen, get, oxygen gets absorbed in the body. So we're basically breathing out the oxygen again, and we're only absorbing about 25% of the oxygen that, from the air that we breathe in. So uh, breathing well is not just a spiritual practice. Uh, it was considered that, you know, from the yogic traditions and as well as, as, well as the uh, meditative uh, traditions. But now we actually have a lot of signs to back up the fact that breathing more slowly, around say six to eight breaths per minute, is immensely beneficial for your body. The first thing that breathing slowly does, as you, if you visited any uh, therapist or psychiatrist or psychologist for anxiety issues, is it helps to calm you down. And that's the, one of the main techniques to, when you're experiencing an anxiety attack, to do slow, regular breathing. Uh, some of it call, some, they call it square breathing, well, that's one of the techniques. But uh, what the research also shows is that when we do breathe in a more controlled and slower way using our diaphragm, which is the lower part of the abdomen, it actually helps us to manage our stress response so we don't get stressed unnecessarily. Uh, stress is an important part of our life because we need some of it to be able to function well. But uh, especially nowadays, it's, uh, we get stressed for um, many things which don't necessarily have anything to do with our, our own survival or our well-being. It's just, just going through the, the daily act of work, family, taking care of your children provokes stress. So when we learn to breathe uh, yeah, correctly, then it helps us manage our stress response. And when we are stressed, what happens is that uh, it suppresses our immune system. That means when we're chronically stressed, that means we're feeling stressed a lot of the time, we actually are more susceptible to colds, flus, and prone to get sick. So that's one sign that you know we are getting too stressed. And one way of, there are many other ways, but one way of enabling ourselves to deal with stress better is to learn how to breathe well. And if you breathe well, you'll also live better. So let's start by finding uh, our breath. So I'd like you to put one hand uh, in the middle of your chest and the other hand, I'm not sure if you can see this, uh, at your lower belly, just below your belly button, your navel. Now, we want to try to allow the breath, our breath as we breathe in, to travel all the way down to the lower belly. You know, most people uh, are very uh, 
kind of concerned about having a flat belly so they always try to hold their belly in so that stops them from using this lower belly to breathe well but here we're actually using this lower belly to allow our diaphragm to function fully so that we can actually absorb all the air right down to the bottom of our lungs and that's where these uh, air sacs are, the alveoli and it absorbs the oxygen that goes into our blood so sit comfortably, you can lie down also if you prefer and one hand in the middle of your chest, uh, level of your heart perhaps and the other hand lower belly then as you breathe in just allow your breath to travel all the way down to your lower belly and you can feel it feel it expanding if you hold your 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 lower stomach that expands and it moves out then as you breathe out let it contract you can pull it in a little bit you know this may not uh, feel very natural if you're just used to chest breathing because if you're chest breathing, if you're a natural chest breather, you will notice that this part you'll feel it moving as you breathe in and out rather than your lower belly so if that's the case, don't worry because uh, everything, <clears throat> everything is possible through practice and it's just, just a skill that we can learn so uh, you may need to be a bit more conscious of your lower belly and allow your breath to travel all the way down there so let's start I will uh, lead it with with some counting but if you find it too slow or too fast then please uh, go at a pace which is more comfortable for you so sitting or lying down one hand on your chest middle of your chest, one hand just below your navel you can close your eyes if you want to to help you be more aware of where your breath is then breathing in lower belly expands breathing out it contracts breathing in breathing out See if you can notice the movement either of your lower belly or your chest out in out in out in out in out in and out now see if you can go at your own pace just paying attention to where your breath is maybe you start to doze off or your mind starts going somewhere else that's okay, it's not a problem so don't worry about it just, just come back when you're aware that you're no longer paying attention come back to the feeling of your breath again so in this exercise we're just trying to feel our breath see if we can feel it in our diaphragm our lower belly just allow your shoulders to relax any tension that you're holding in your body allow it to flow away
Just feel your breath. Just notice what it's like when you're aware that you're breathing. Awareness of our breath is the foundation of virtually all meditation practices. As you do these breathing exercises, try as best as you can to breathe through your nose. And there are very important reasons why we do this, which I'll explain later. <clears throat> Gently breathing in and gently breathing out. A breath, if you can, allow it to be gentle as much as you can't, you won't even hear it. It's, it's virtually silent. You can't that you can't hear yourself breathing. It's that light and gentle. Okay, just one more cycle, then return both knee, both hands to your knees and just sit for a couple of minutes. See if you can notice the difference. Now you've done some slow, deep breathing compared to before you started to sit down to do this practice.
So, why is it that why is it that it's important to breathe through our nose? Uh, well, because actually our nose is designed for breathing, uh, not our mouth, and. Uh, Many people may wonder, especially if you're um, a, sp a sports person and you're doing some uh, strenuous activity, you will tend to gulp air in through your mouth. But what is very interesting, and uh, I think if those of you who are sports people and want to explore it further, is to look at the research the current research and they they did experiments with um, top class athletes and they found that if these athletes use their nose to breathe they were actually more efficient they're more they perform better and they recovered faster after their activity so for us you know uh, most of us are not Top class athletes, and uh, you know, we may think, well, there's no difference to breathing through our nose and through our mouth, but there is. One very important thing is that, firstly, we have, you know, many many small hairs in our nose, and that helps to filter out a lot of the dust and pollution. But if you just gulp through your mouth there's no filter at all. So any dust, any whatever uh, toxins or whatever that are on dust particles will go directly into your lungs. Whereas you have a chance of filtering some of it out if you use your nose. That's one thing. The other thing is that there is a gas called uh, nitric oxide, which is extremely important for our body. When we uh, breathe in nitric oxide, what it does is it expands. It, the effect of it is to expand our blood vessels. So if you, which means that it will help to reduce any high blood pressure. It also helps your blood to flow more freely. And one of the areas where we actually produce nitric oxide ourselves is here. So when we use our nose to breathe, we're actually inhaling in this uh, gas that we produce into our lungs. And that helps with our blood flow. And that's really important because people who have uh, problems with uh, high blood pressure or cardiovascular diseases, this gas is very, very, very helpful. There are even supplements that you can take to help build up this, um, this gas in your blood. But why not use your nose? It's free and it's so easy. You know, if you just practice breathing in through your nose, all this stuff automatically happens. <coughs> and breathing at a slow, relaxed rate. So that's uh, the two benefits of breathe through your nose. Also, it helps to regulate the temperature of the air. If it's very cold, then it warms it up before it hits your lungs, which is uh, helpful for your lungs also. And uh, when we do these breathing exercises, uh, it may be helpful also to use the sort of classic technique, which is placing your tongue, the tip of your tongue, against the roof of your mouth, just behind your front teeth, okay? And actually that's also taught in many meditation uh, techniques, that you put the tip of your tongue behind your front teeth, at the roof of your mouth, like that, as you breathe in and out. <clears throat> so maybe it um, is a little, feels a little strange for you, but if you just do it, I, I it just happens automatically now. I don't even have to think about it. But that also helps you to be able to breathe better, okay? And the other thing is our posture. We really don't want to be hunched over like that because that compresses everything and you can't have a, 
a good breath, at least you should be sitting relatively upright. And that will allow your breath to travel all the way down and uh, let your lung expand as much as you can. Um, the next exercise I want to do will involve some movement of the hands and we'll do this for about 10 minutes. <clears throat> and it will help to, uh, it, the hand movements help to open up your chest a little bit more so you can breathe even more deeply. So it's very simple and it's the same basic principle. As you breathe in, use your lower, lower belly or your diaphragm to allow your your lower belly to expand so that your air goes all the way in. Then as you breathe out, contract and the air comes out from your lower belly all the way up. Just, uh, if you find it helpful, just think of it as a balloon. As you pump air in, it will expand and as you let the balloon out, it will contract. So when we breathe, putting both hands on your knees, when you breathe in, allow your hands to rise up to the ceiling and in your palm you finish with your palms facing forward and your fingers pointing towards the ceiling then breathing out they sink back down again and end up on your knees okay so try to relax your shoulders because often we kind of tense up when we do something you don't have to do it perfectly uh, that's not the the actual Movement is not, it doesn't, it's not a kind of a technique that you have to perfect. It's just allowing your arms to float up and then sink down. That's all. Okay. So close your eyes if you prefer. And this one, you, you probably have to need to do it sitting up. Uh, you can sit in a chair or on the floor, whichever is most comfortable for you. And as you breathe in, breathing in, your hands float up. Fingers pointing to the ceiling, breathing out, to sink back down. Breathing in. And out. In. Out. In, out, in, out. Now, just go at your own rhythm. Just remember that your hand movements follow the rhythm of your breath. Your breath controls your hands rather than the other way around. So if you breathe, if you're, you're finding yourself breathing a bit quickly, then move your arms a bit more quickly. If you find yourself breathing more slowly, then move your arms more slowly. And remember, there's not a competition. What we're doing is really getting more familiar with how to breathe. Actually training ourselves to breathe in a way that the ancient uh, wise people used to breathe.
Let's do two more cycles. Then end and allow <coughs> your hands to just rest on your knees and just sit for a few moments. Okay, there are actually a lot of scientific benefits <clears throat> to uh, practicing this kind of breathing. And as you practice this, then after a while in your daily life, you will begin to breathe in a uh, way that is better for you, which means slower and more deeply. And that just comes naturally. Uh, <clears throat> if you're finding uh, that you're not sleeping very well at night or hard to uh, drop off to sleep, then these exercises will also help you to sleep better. And uh, again, the important thing is to breathe through your nose as you breathe as you sleep. Now, if if you wake up. Uh, in the morning or in the middle of the night and your mouth is very, very dry, there's a good chance that you're using your mouth to breathe as you sleep. And there are ways of uh, helping that. But uh, actually using your mouth to breathe is, actually, is um, not very good for health. It leads to very disturbed sleep and also sleep apnea, which is basically what it is. So. Uh, there are ways in which to help yourself uh, sleep, breathe through your nose and sleep, and uh, perhaps we can talk about that next week. So sometimes, you know, we live in a very, very uh, techno technological society, very complicated, everything's very fast, but, uh, and we expect solutions to things in our life to have the same kind of character, that it has to be complicated and perhaps expensive and uh, something like that. And we uh, have forgotten sometimes that so often the greatest benefits can come from the simplest things and the simplest thing is learning how to breathe well. So we will continue to practice this in, on Tuesday nights because I think it's extremely important <clears throat> uh, and it's very beneficial for not only our physical health but for our spiritual practice because breath, as I said before, is the foundation of almost all meditative practices. So if we learn to breathe well, then our practice also will tend to be more, uh, more stable. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. I hope that you will take some of these uh, suggestions on board and try them out. Uh, I know most of you live very busy lives, but if you take like five minutes before you go to sleep and just breathe this slow, deep, rhythmic breathing, uh, you may be surprised at uh, the changes that uh, uh, come about because of that. But it has to be done regularly for you to notice, like, you know, almost every day. So I hope you all stay well, safe and healthy. And we'll see you for the next time. If you are interested, we have Thursday Night Meditation, which is uh, more on the practice and also a Dharma sharing. So, thank you.